Um, let's tonight, let's let's pray as we uh, go into the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, mother. Amen. OK. And if you need a little bit of space, you can move back and move up. So you got some knees. Um, we're going to continue um, to work in uh, the book of Revelation. There is. Um, um, something that I wanted to show you on on tonight before before we get started and part of this has to deal with um, uh, the appearing of the Lord and hopefully through the teaching we're going to talk about his coming versus his appearing uh, he appears three times he comes um, he comes three times. It's called an advent, actually two times. So he appears and then uh, he comes. Last week we were talking about the appearance of, of Jesus uh, in the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar said, I see a, a, the fourth person in the fiery furnace and it looked as unto the Son of God. Um, We've got an uh, appearance uh, with Jacob. And Jacob is in the desert, um, in, in the desert of Paharan, and his name is being changed to Jacob to Israel. And if you all remember the story in the book of Genesis, he saw angels ascending and descending, and there in the desert during the night, he begins to wrestle with an angel, which is called a theophany. And the angel that he actually wrestled with was not um, Michael. Uh, it was actually the Lord Jesus Christ uh, himself. And then we have the uh, corporate uh, uh, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter number 24. Um, and you've heard the scripture. Um, and, and, and Mary had a baby. Um, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes. She laid him in the name manger in verses uh, 20 to 24 and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people uh, from their sins. He uh, lives his life uh, some uh, 32, 33 years. Um, he's crucified um, and he's in the grave uh, for three days and then he comes out of the grave um, and he shows himself to uh, the disciples, but also to, to many people. He appears or he goes up according to Acts chapter number one, um, about the fifth verse. And he speaks to his disciples on the Mount of Olive and telling them and giving them uh, some signs. Um, and he says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem Samaria um, and to the uttermost parts of Jerusalem Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth and as he was saying that the Bible says as he was on the Mount of Olive he rises up and as he is rising up the disciples that are there they're standing there gazing and then the Bible says in Acts chapter number one, there appeared unto them men clothed in white apparel, angels, okay? And they told the disciples, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus that came, uh, that left, shall come in like manner. So um, as he rose up, the angels told him, he's coming again. Amen. Amen. And he's going to touch Mount Olive. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. Now, when he comes, um, the question is, the, you know, you, you hear the song, every eye shall see him. Well, when he comes to do battle with the Antichrist and those who reject God, every eye is going to see him. I believe 
with all of my spirit that uh, there will be a rapture and the rapture will take place. And while we are in heaven, as the Bible says, at the supper, which should last a year. And this is the seventh seal. While we are celebrating, uh, things are going on in the earth like never before. And then he comes to earth to deal with the Antichrist and the false prophet and those who took the mark of the beast. This is then recorded in Matthew's chapter number 24, because the disciples wanted to know, we want to know the signs of your coming. I don't believe that this is in reference to his appearance. His appearance, as we call it, is a Latin word called rapture. And the rapture is the taking away of the body of Christ, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, and also 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, all right? Uh, uh, a sound of a trump, of, a, uh, of an archangel, Okay, I showed you the, the large chunk, uh, the ram's horn at the altar, and it's the same thing. The trump is going to sound according to 1 Thessalonians. Now, when that trump is sound, not everybody's going to hear that trump during the rapture. It is the saints of God that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, washed in the blood of the Lamb. They're going to hear the trump of God. And as First Thess Thessalonians chapter number 14 starting in verse number 15, they're going to do a change. Their body is going to change. Those that are alive, we're going to change from corruption to incorruption. My God. In a blink of an eye. Thank you, Lord. Lord. What is a blink of an eye? One twelfth millionth of a second. It's when the uh, light reflects on the retina. That's how quick it's going to be. So you won't be able to pack your suitcase. Okay. Repentance is going to be too late. Okay. In a twinkling of an eye. One twelfth of a millionth of a second. It's when the sun or light reflects in the retina. And that's happening constantly. If you can see sight. It's happening at one twelfth of a millionth of a second. It's not even a second. It's a twelfth of a million of a second. That's how he's going to come. And the dead in Christ are going to rise. Can you imagine in the twelfth of a millionth of a second, we're going to be caught up, everybody all over the world, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Now, how is that going to be, not in a second, but a twelfth of a million of a second? And we're going to be caught up. The Bible says that there we will be with him. But what's going on during that time? Before we get into the lesson, I want to show you this video uh, because I believe it is fairly realistic of what's going to occur. And it's, go and it's startling. But I believe this is what we're going to see in the appearance of the Lord. If you shut the lights off, my dear friend.
cut the lights on. That's how quick he'll come. And the thing that really um, impacted me, and I've shown this video before, the thing that impacted me the most is while the preacher was preaching, people were left behind. They were in the church. Come on, sir. But the church was not in them. Come on, sir. What will we say if we miss the rapture? Because all of us think that we've got time. All of us think God will just outweigh my good, look at my bad, and maybe I am make it. But even in the which uh, constitute a premillennial rapture, there were people in the church, children, my God. Parents are gone, but children are left. Parents are gone, children are left. Children are left, but parents are here. A husband is there and the wife is gone. Or vice versa. What will you say when you had the opportunity to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, to receive his grace and his mercy? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you missed the rapture. Tribulation is your avenue and you will have to make an ultimate decision to either take the mark of the beast which will doom you to hell or you will be executed guillotined martyred your head will be cut off Jesus. because of the cause of Christ. Yes. And there is only one religion I know that still uses the guillotine. Islam. Yes. Amen. And Islam is going to say, if you accept Jesus as a Messiah or as the Messiah, then we're going to cut your head off. Jesus. If you accept the mark of the beast, we'll give you a sign in your forehead or in your right hand, yes. which is a computer chip. Yes. Amen. They're going to interject or in, inject a computer chip in your right hand on, or in your forehead. So the only way you can buy, eat, get gasoline, you're going to have to show the mark. Amen. Yes. I'm going to show you something. And it's even smaller than this. About the size of a rifle. Right. On my fake American Express card, <laughs> everybody says fake. It's fake. <laughs> now, you don't get fake American. No, no, this... That's the real boy there. <laughs> On the American Express card is a chip. Amen. And it's right here. It's a chip. 
with my Americans, my American Express card, Amen. it can tell me where it's at down to an address. Amen. Amen. That's right. So, do you want to anybody want to touch? No, now you can't touch. You know, I'm not going to let you touch it. I, some of us are saved, but, but all of it, we're trying. Some of us are trying to be saved. And this is for those who are trying to be saved. I'm going to just keep it in my hand. This ship knows when I'm at Longwood. It knows when I'm flying. It knows when I'm going to Japan. I went to South America not too long ago. And they sent me a text. Here are some stores that you can purchase while in South America, in Brazil. It knew where. And so if this chip on a card can tell me where I am, it's got my heart rate, my beast, my beat, my blood is in the chip, you all. So imagine something even smaller than that being injected by a hypothermic needle into your, right under your skin. Or right into your forehead. You won't even feel it. That's what they did with my dog. My dog didn't have a collar. He had a chip. The veterinarian put a chip in him. So when he got lost or we got lost, uh, sometimes we wanted to get lost and get him lost, we knew where he was. Yeah. They're already doing this in India. 6.8 million people are already injected with a chip in their hand yeah. in India yeah. as an experiment. Getting ready for the world system. And actually, there was legislation eight years ago about injecting infants. I think, I think they're doing it. They've already done it. And some parents that are giving birth can put a chip in their children today. Now, it makes sense because if the child is missing or whatever, there's emergency or something of that nature. But all it is is getting us ready for the system, Amen. one world system. The Bible says, somebody turn real quick, in Matthew 24, and 27, quickly. Matthew 24 and 27. Get out of this, get into a PowerPoint. Close that PowerPoint and get into um, the book of Revelation. Matthew 24 and 27. Just, we'll take our time. 37, I'm sorry. Did I say 27? I think it's 37. Matthew 24. And 37. <laughs> We're going to take a time because I want everybody to see it. So my concern here is not just for the loss. I'm talking about people that are in the church, but the church is not in you. So you can come to the crystal and you can preach, you can sing, you can dance, you can be an officer, but the church is not in you. You still smoke, you still drink, you still cuss, you still fight, you do all the things that the world is doing under the guise of being in the church. But when the rapture comes, you can't fool the Holy Ghost. You might be able to fool Bishop Carter 
and Bishop Carter might be able to fool you. But when the rapture comes, the Holy Ghost will identify immediately if you've been filled with the blood of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody open your mouth and say, you might fool Bishop. No, 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 don't say it because you're not fooling me. You're not fooling me. I just ain't said nothing. I haven't just uncovered your mess. But you think you are fooling other folk. But the Holy Ghost knows who belong to him. Touch your neighbor and say, you can't fool the Lord. The Lord. And the only person you're fooling is who? Yourself. You're not even fooling yourself. <laughs> you're probably fooling your dog, your cat. I mean, it could be the snake in your yard. But you're not even fooling yourself. And you think that you can deceive the saints. You can't deceive the saints. Because the saints identify what's in me should be in you. Come on, somebody. And when I don't identify what's in me, not in you, there's a dead cat on the line. Come on, somebody. And if you don't identify the power in me and you've got power, then there's a dead cat on me. Hello, somebody. You've got to be real. Be not deceived. For God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sow. So you're having hell because you sold hell. And you continue to you continue to sell it. <laughs> sow it and sell it. God said, you are not deceiving me. So now we're walking around and we don't know necessarily who's saved and unsaved. I'm preaching. And what God is going to do, he's going to allow your private life to become your public life. Touch your neighbor. I'm preaching hard. I know I am. Touch your neighbor and say, be sure. Your sins will find you out. That's why it's important to repent every day. Lord, if there's something that I should have done and I didn't do it, Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me with your blood. I don't want to smoke. I don't want to drink. I don't want to lie. I don't want to cheat. I want to be real for you, Lord. Am I real in the public? I want to be real in my private life. Somebody open your mouth and say, it's real. It's real. Jesus is real to me. So my prayer every day is let my private life be like my public life. If I'm acting like a bishop when I'm at the crystal, well, let me act like a bishop when I'm at home. If I'm not drinking beer here, I can't be drinking beer at home. I can't be chasing skirts. Are y'all hearing me? But the Holy Ghost can discern between right and wrong. And what else can discern? The Word of God is like a two-edged sword. It cuts in, coming out, between the soul and the spirit, between the marrow and the bone. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I want to be ready yes. 
Yes. Whether he Amen. whether he appears in my sleep or whether I'm driving my automobile while I'm on U.S. air, while I'm away from Mother Carter. Come on, somebody. Amen. When you don't see me and I'm here, I want to be holy because yes. he can come at any time while I'm preaching, while I'm singing, while I'm going to the grocery store, while I'm hanging out clothes. I want to be ready when the Shabbat when Jesus comes. Lord, I thank you. Glory, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Holy, Lord, I thank you. The song said, will you be ready when Jesus comes? Will you be ready when he comes? Get your house in order. Yes. He's on the way. Yes. Will you be ready? If you miss the rapture, don't even try to call the number. Come on, somebody. Are you going to get, this is Maurice Carter, please leave the message. Have a wonderful day. And some of you going to call the saints. Yeah. I know the people that were real. If they answer the phone, then it ain't the rapture. Come on, somebody. But what happens if Pop Dave don't answer his phone? A bishop don't answer his phone. A mother don't answer her phone. And millions of people disappear. And you had a chance to get right. You had a chance to go to the altar yeah. and repent of your sins. Yeah. But you thought you had enough time. You thought you had another day. You thought you had another month. And the rapture can happen, right? Hey, Shabbat. It can happen right now. Thank you, Lord. So before I even get into the lesson, I want to give you some scriptures. You read 20, have we read 24 and 37? Come on, somebody hooked on phonics. Read very clearly. Matthews 24, verse number 37. What does it say? But as the days of Noah, so shall the coming of of the Lord be. Read. They were eating. They were drinking. They were partying. Thinking they had tomorrow. Hello somebody. Yes. Come on read. They were marrying. They were divorcing. Remarrying. And divorcing. Remarrying. Divorce, remarry, remarry, divorce, divorce. Come on, somebody. They were marrying their lovers, homosexuals, lesbians. They were giving in marriage. The question now in California is they want a person that wants to marry their animal. Called bestiality. So a person is saying, if I can marry someone with the same sex, why can't I marry my dog? The devil is a liar. The Bible says in Romans chapter number one, because they would not retain God in their knowledge, God turned them over to a reprobate. They'll be marrying lizards. And the next thing is they're already doing it. Artificial intelligence. Yeah. They're going to be marrying robots. Yes. That's it. Robots are going to be marrying live human beings. Yes. That's what it meant. Marrying and giving in marriage. Yes. Read, daughter. Is that it? Mm. 
Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be lying at the end. Keep going. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour the Lord will come. But know this, that if the man of the house, Hallelujah. the good man of the house, had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Yes. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man coming, who when is the faithful and wise servant, who his his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Okay, stop, stop. So what was going on in the days of Noah? Let's turn to Genesis chapter number five. So Jesus is telling his disciples, as it were, in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. Now, the thing that I want you to pay attention to is this. The Jews estimate at this time that there were probably estimate during the fifth and sixth chapter of the book of Genesis about six to eight million people on the earth, on all the earth, estimate. Six to eight million. Noah was 500 years old when God spoke to him and said, I want you to build an ark. So Noah preaches for 120 years at 500. Oh my God, you're not hearing me. The man preached for 120 years saying, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready. And you better send my. God told Noah in a rainbow sign. Oh, I don't know that Baptist song. My daddy taught me that one. Didn't know what it mean. Won't be water, but. Higher next time. So at 500 years, God speaks to Noah, tells him, I want you to build a boat that is a football field and a half long, four stories high. Special wood and pitch it so that it will have buoyancy. Now, if there were six million people out of six million people only eight were saved Jesus amen Jesus only eight people were saved y'all didn't get that he said as it was in the day, as it were, in the days of Noah. So everybody who's saying they're going to heaven, look to your left, and look to your right. Now look at yourself. <laughs> Only. Eight. Jesus. I got to ask God this question when I get to heaven. Why Noah's family? Why his children? Why their wives? Wow. There was more space for animals. Oh, y'all not getting this. The ark was for people. But people wouldn't listen. 
how long should Bishop preach for you to repent? How long is it going to take you to make up your mind you're going to live for God and stop perpetrating? Noah preached for 120 years. Matter of fact, they got mad at Noah. They became angry with Noah. There ain't no rain in sight. There wasn't any cloudy days for 120 years. And y'all got to remember, since Noah was 500, 120 days, I mean 120 years is like a week. If you're living 500, 600 years, Methuselah over 800 years, there ain't no rain. And the Bible says Noah shut himself in the ark. I know you all laugh when the rain come in to the crystal. But the crystal is an ark. Come on, somebody. Y'all wonder why we have so much space? It's an ark to save much people. Oh, y'all not hearing me? And you have a chance to get in. But some of you all get in and then you jump out. You jump in on Sunday. On, How great son. is our God. <laughs> Everybody sing how great. Come on, you're in the spirit. And then you're in the spirit called Jack Daniels. <laughs> on Monday through Friday. Come on, somebody. Amen. So you jump in Amen. and you jump out. Amen. You jump in. Tell me, Pastor, I'm going to get it together. You better have it together. Amen. Come on. Amen. Genesis chapter number five. Come on. Somebody else. Genesis chapter number five. Start with verse number one. Somebody read. Genesis chapter number five, verse number one. As it was in the days of Noah. Let's find out what was in, what's going on in, in Moses' day. Come on. This is the book of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. In the day when they were created. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image. Uh -huh. I want to stop. So the book of Genesis, I wanted this to start with Genesis chapter 5 because it shows the lineage. It is through Noah that Jesus comes. You remember the first verse says, this is the book of Adam and the generation of Adam. Come on, somebody. So now, real quickly, UVA graduate, you read so well. Turn to Genesis chapter number 6 and now read verse number 1. So this is the book of Adam. This is the bloodline where Jesus comes through. So Genesis chapter 5 can be connected to Matthew chapter 1. Because if you read Matthew chapter 1, it begins with the lineage, yes. the generations of Jesus Christ, yes. 42 generations, yes. 42 generations. And they're earmarked in Matthew's tap, uh, Matthew chapter uh, number 1. Here is what happens in Genesis chapter 6. Read, my dear friend. And it came to pass. And it came to pass that men begin to multiply. And daughters were born unto them. And they had children. Children had children. 
Children, children had children. Come on. That the sons of God. That the sons of God. This is theology here. This is to believe that angels came and left their first abode in heaven and came to the earth and saw that the women of the earth were beautiful. And they knew the women of the earth. And we're going to find, and there were giants in the land. Okay, I know you all, um, you know, believe the story, Highway to Heaven was his name. It was an angel walking, you know, about four feet or five feet, 11. But most angels are giants, nine, 10 feet tall, even taller than that. These angels came to earth and saw that the women of the earth were fair and had children because they wanted to see what it was like to be in the earth. Now touch somebody and say, that's just nasty. That's just... (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm just being honest. Because according to Isaiah and Ezekiel, there was war in heaven. Amen. Amen. And the angels, particularly El Bin El Shahar, made war in heaven against God and said, I'm going to kick you out of your northern region. I will be like the Most High. And the angels fought and they were rebuked by Michael. Book, the book of John tells us 20, 21, 21st chapter, I think. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as he fell like lightning when he made war in heaven. And the Bible tells us in Genesis that a third of the heaven fell. Look at somebody say, these are not demons. Whew. They are not demons. Amen. Come on, sir. Here are demons. Woo, my, 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 my. I'm going to blow your skid here. The people who died in the flood, That's right. they became demons. Angels have never been referred as demons. And it's called the Ante, Antiluvian Age. Woo. The millions of people that were drowned. They walked the earth like zombies. Never experienced heaven. They don't have authority to go to heaven. Only the angels have authority to approach God's throne. So during the Antiluvian stage, these men and women that were drowned in the great flood, not in hell, not in heaven, they walked the earth. Tormented and, and tormenting. And what are they trying to do according to Mark chapter 5 and Mark chapter 8? When a spirit finds that a house has been cleansed, it's been kicked out, it goes to a desert place. Oh, my God. I'm talking to some of you now. The spirits leave you, but they are looking for a body to inhabit. And that's what demons are. Angels don't inhabit you. Demons do. Demons are looking for a body to inhabit. Come on, somebody. So many of you have had an experience, not only of a transfer, but of possession. Come on, sir. 
and a demon can possess your mind. You can't see it. But those of us that are spiritual can see the contortion or the, uh, the contortion of your mouth, your eyes, your body language. You have a fighting spirit. You have a cussing spirit. Everybody is wrong, including the bishop. You have been possessed by a demon because it's looking for a body to possess. The Bible says the devil goes up to and fro looking who he can touch your neighbor and say he's looking for a body. He's looking. He don't care if it's a woman. He don't care if it's a child. He don't care if it's a man. He don't care if it's a dog. He don't care if it's a lion. He's looking for a body to inhabit. Come on, somebody. That's why it's important to have the Holy Ghost. Because the evil spirit and the Holy Spirit can't be in the same place. And some of you in here, you have lost the spirit because you grieve the spirit. You won't worship him. You won't praise him. You won't glorify him. And all you can think about is what you're going through or the money that you don't have. But I heard the words that let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in the family. Praise him with the instruments. Praise him with the string instruments. Praise him with the cymbal. The loud sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath. Somebody ought to praise him right now. His name shall be praised. For the name of the Lord is a mighty strong power. And the righteous run in and they are saved. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. So when you're in trouble and you have lost your way, I dare you to call on the name Jesus. 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 Just tell yourself, I don't want to fake a praise. I don't. Some of y'all are faking a praise. Some of y'all didn't praise him at all. That's all right. You're not even praising him. You should have been cut off last night. You should be in jail right now. I should be in jail right now. I should be dead right now. But because of the grace of God, Glory, glory. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I sold some drugs. And the drug deal went down wrong. The man pulled the gun, a nine millimeter to my head, and pulled the trigger. But the bullet didn't come out. He pulled the trigger again. A bullet didn't come out. He pulled the trigger a third time. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
and you don't want me to praise him? I should be dead. Should be dead. Sleeping in my grave. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If he delivered you 20 years ago, this same Jesus is able to deliver you tonight. If he delivered you five minutes ago, he's the same Jesus that can deliver you out of any trouble that you are going through. But you've got to praise him. You, you've got to worship him. You, You've got to turn your life. Glory. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Touch somebody right now and say, I think I better repent right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Right now. I'm going to repent right now. I'm not going to wait till I get home. I'm not going to wait till I get in the car. I'm not, not going to wait till Sunday morning. I'm going to say, Lord, I'm sorry right now. Lord, I've done wrong. I failed you, oh God. I've sinned. I've come short of the glory of God. Am I the only one that can feel the Holy Ghost in here? I feel the anointing of God as it were in the days of Noah. Come on, brother, read. Verse number two, chapter number six. Read it again. Verse number two, six. So, immediately, when the angels left their first abode, this is what God said. I ain't going to keep fighting with you. I'm not going to keep begging you to repent. I'm not going to keep begging you to praise me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to keep begging you to do the right thing. Glory. He said, now, my spirit is not going to fight with man. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is telling you, don't do it, but you do it. Yeah. Come on, sir. Amen. That is called grieving the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I had some money in my pocket. Thank you, Lord. I got some money. Nehemiah gave me some money. Jesus, I was so happy. When I, when I get money, I stay home. Glory. Because I believe the, the Holy Ghost is going to tell me to give it away. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. I was saving it. Touch somebody say, I even hid it from mother. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Put it in the booth in the back of the stocking now. I went to the store today. Touch somebody said, you should have stayed at the church. <laughs> Hundred dollars. Got me a dollar. Got me a dollar. Got me a dollar. Hey, 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 hey. And the Lord spoke to me. And I, I know the voice of the Lord. And this lady was going down the aisle. And the Lord said, I didn't know her. said, give her the hundred dollars. I turned around. <laughs> I did. I did. I turned around, went down another aisle. Guess what? That lady followed me. Come on. Sir. I asked her, are you following me? She said, it seems that way, doesn't it? I said, who are you? And she introduced herself. He said, who are you? I said, my name is Maurice. I said, do you believe in God? She said, yes, I do. I, I believe in God. I said, do you believe God speaks to people? She said, I do believe the Lord speaks to people. 
I said, are you sure? I said, are you a backslider? Are you? Because uh, if she was a backslider, then I could wrestle with, she don't need the money. She's just going to smoke it or drink it away. She said, I believe that, my friend. I said, the Lord told me to give you this. She began to cry right there in food line. She said, I was at my last inn. I had come in to shoplift. She said, I was walking around the store. I've been walking for about 40 minutes to see. I said, ma'am, you don't have to do that. She said, sir, but you don't know the hard times. And I said, the Holy Ghost told me to give you this. And she began to cry. She had not picked up anything, but she was getting ready to. Come on, somebody. Jesus. I gave her the money. I walked down the aisle. I came in here upset. Sat right there. Pop. I sat right in that chair. Right there in that chair. And some said, look to your left. Give and it shall be given unto you. I said right there, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give in to your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all. Look at somebody say, it's coming back. It's coming back. And it may not come back to me. It may come back to my children. It may come back to my grandchildren. Glory, hallelujah. It may come back to one of you. It may come back to Mother Carter. Hello, somebody. But when you grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit keep telling you, do that, do it, do it, or don't do that, don't do it, and you keep doing it. God said, I'm not going to fight with you anymore. If you want to do wrong, if you want to lie, and you want to cheat, you want to be deceptive, I'll turn you over to yourself. So you're a lie and not even have any conscience of lying. You're a lie to a holy man. You'll be deceptive to a holy man. Because you've grieved the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost says, okay, I take my hand. I've warned you. Come on, somebody. Y'all should be having dreams, Crystal. Because I've been telling the Lord, get them in their dreams. They ain't hearing the message. Talk to them in their dreams. Talk to them in their visions. Speak to them, Lord. Come on, somebody. I have. Thank you, Lord. That's the Lord talking to you. Speak, Lord. Speak to me. Laid awake at night. <laughs> Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. And you wonder why. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. <laughs> but when you continue to deny God, he says, okay. I'd rather be turned over to the devil than to turn, be turned over to myself. Because when he turns me over to me, I don't know, I don't have the mind to repent. Because everything looks okay. But at least when he turns me over to the devil, the devil whips me back to God. But I don't whip myself. Lord, turn me over to my enemy. Don't turn me over to me. Come on, somebody. That's a terrible feeling for God to turn you over to yourself. And you can do wrong and it doesn't even bother you. Teshuba. Turn away. Come on, read. Mr. Hook on phonics. Come on. Read, my brother.
and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. These became giants, renowned. They had bodies like humans, but extra strength like angels. Hercules, Hercules had extraordinary strength like Samson, a derivative of an angel and a woman, great strength. Extra human strength. Come on, read. Amen. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. God repents. It's bad when we make him repent. <laughs> we supposed to what? Teshuva. But God said he turned away. God turned away. He repented. That means he turned and said, why did I make man? Why did I create him? Why did I create her? They're living beneath their privilege. They're living beneath their assignment. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Amen. You don't want God to repent for creating you. Yes. For the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Yes. Yes. And God's anger was kindled against humankind. Yes. Why? Come on, read. Why was his anger kindled? Come on. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace. Stop. But Noah found grace. Touch somebody and say he wasn't perfect. <laughs> but he had grace. Yes. And what is grace? It is the unmerited favor of God. Did you hear that? It's not because I'm so good. It's because I have his favor. It's not because I'm so righteous. But his hand is on me. Even when I go to the left and I go to the right, Lord, keep your hand. Even though I fall, but keep your hand on me, Lord. Even though I wobble, keep your hands on me, Lord. Look at somebody say, I'm not perfect. But I've got a perfect praise for the mess he brought me out of. I'm not perfect, but I got a perfect praise for what he delivered me out of. Noah found grace. That means he got favor he didn't even deserve. You didn't choose God. God chose you. For ye are a chosen generation. Peculiar. He chose you. And you came to the realization, I need to accept that I've been chosen. Come on, somebody. Yes. And God gives you time yes. to be enlightened. Yes. Yes. You can't even come to God. Jesus. 
unless he opened your mind to draw you to. Even when you repented, you didn't repent on your own. God opened your mind. And if it was left up to the devil, he'd keep you in your sin. He'd keep you in your backslidden state. He keep you in the dark. But God opened up your mind and said, if you could just call my name. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his trouble. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them. Song number 34. Touch your neighbor and say, have you cried lately? I'm not talking about with the stories. Come on. I'm not talking about different world. I'm not talking about over the president's speech. I'm not talking about Nancy Pelosi. I'm talking about have you cried unto the Lord? I cried and I cried. I cried all night long. I cried and I cried until I found the Lord. My soul just wouldn't be content until I found the Lord. Hallelujah. 15 minutes. We'll be out by 8.30. Last week, I told you, and we're going we're gonna to get to some, some more scripture. We talked about three things that were significant. What was this? But what was it called? A bowl. It's called a bowl. Okay. Book of Revelation. A bowl represents a chalice. And God says, I'm going to fill my anger with seven bowls. And pour it out on the earth. So there are seven horns, seven bowls, and seven seals. Bowl represents a cup. And God says during the tribulation, I'm going to pour it seven times. And I'm going to pour my anger on the earth. We haven't seen God's anger yet. Like we have never seen before. It's going to be so God is going to pour his anger out so much that men will run and try to commit suicide. And even death will be afraid of God. Death will pack his suitcase. Death will flee men. Because God... We're just dealing with God in a gesture right now. Because if you cry, he'll hear your cry. Seven seals. And I told you what, a seal is something that you put on a letter and you seal it with wax. And you put your insignia ring, which means it's like FedEx, the authenticity of a communication. So God is going to have seven seals. These are the activities and the uh, events that will occur and it will have God's seal on it. Come on somebody. And we're going to know or they are going to know these are the acts of God. And then the Bible says there will be seven horns. And seven horns represent a trump, it represents an announcement. an announcement that will take place. And what they would do in the Old Testament, they would blow the trump of God, a ram's horn. And they were able to signal 
if there was intrusion or if there was peace or the shepherd was coming home and they're going to be trumps and they're going to blow four to the north, four to the south, four to the south, four to the north, to the east, to the west, to sound the entrance of God. And every time you hear It opens the door, another vial. God says, you won't worship me? I'll make you beg to die. Come on, somebody. And then there's the trump of the Last Supper. When all of us that have been raptured, Sit down with Jesus at the table. Oh, what a time. Party. Not like when I was in college. No drugs, no, no booze bomb. Come on, somebody. No malt liquor. But sitting at the table with my brothers and sisters, talking how I made it over. My soul looks back. For one year, we're going to sup with God. Come on, somebody. I get tired after about 10 seconds of shouting, but I'll be able to shout for a year. Come on, somebody. And while tribulation is going on down in the earth, for one year, the saints of God will be at the marriage supper. I believe Jesus is going to meet every one of us. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on over. i make you a ruler of many. Hallelujah. Going to put a crown. Go get the crown. Going to put a crown on my head called the crown of life. And we're going to live in a land where we never grow old. Come on, somebody. But well, some of us are going to have some other crowns. If you make it to heaven, everybody's going to get a crown of life. But some of us are going to get some other crowns. Come on, somebody. You did what God called you to do. You finished your assignment. Then some of you are just going to be glad you got the crown of life. I made it. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I got the crown of life. <laughs> There's a crown on mother's uh, bookshelf. Some of us are going to get the crown of life according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Your works are going to be tried and those works that are not God, they're going to be burned. Okay, but you yourself shall be, look at somebody say your works are going to be burned up. But you made it. <laughs> Some of you are just going to be happy. <laughs> you can smell the smoke in your clothes. <laughs> You're going to smell smoke hell. Hell smoke. I'm just joking. Not in the scriptures. But some of us are going to get the crown of life. And others of us are going to get other crowns. Crown of patience. Crown of long suffering. Crown of peace. Come on, somebody. A crown of love. Crown of great works. Some of you caused people to be saved. Some of us went to the foreign country. Come on, somebody. But you did what God assigned it you to do. Assigned you to do. 
Come on. And we're going to take off our crowns and lay them at the feet of Jesus. Come on, somebody. And he shall be crowned the King of Kings and the Lord. I'm going to take my crown down. Some of us are only going to get a crown of life. Just going to make it by the grace of God. But some of you, when you had the opportunity to backslide, you didn't backslide. You kept the faith. It wasn't popular. It wasn't easy. You were talked about. You were hungry. You were poor. You were broken. But you kept coming to church. You kept doing your assignment. You did it with excellence. You didn't make an excuse. I didn't do it because. Come on, somebody. I know I'm going to heaven. But I'm working for crowns. Come on. And the more crowns I have are the more crowns I lay at his feet. Because all the glory belongs to him. The more crowns I get, the more crowns I lay at the feet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why I say hallelujah. That's why I say glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 In a land where we'll never grow old. In a land. The Bible tells us in Revelations. The angels are at the altar. Crying out, Alleluia. Incessantly. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Bible says they praise him so much that the altar catches on fire. Come on, somebody. Now hear this. Your praise will burn the mess out of you. You don't praise him enough. But if you can praise him until the fire, who was it who said it was just like fire shut up in my bones. You can praise God so much that he burns the mess out of you because it's no longer about you, but it's about This is not because um, I'm, I'm trying to be very delicate and line upon line, precept upon precept, so you're going to have to give me um, some time and walk through this book of Revelations, the book of Daniels, uh, the book of Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, um, and even the book of Genesis tells us about the coming of the Lord. Um, I think I did this. I, I told you all last week, here are some major events that are going to occur. You have it in writing, yeah. um, in your notes, the rapture of the church, revival of the Roman Empire. I think I told you all about this. 
Um, this is uh, Brexit. And I believe with all of my heart, and I'm going to speak to it, that the Antichrist is going to come out. It's going to rise up out of the Roman Empire. He's going to have some Roman blood, uh, but he's going to have some other blood in him too. Um, he's going to have Islam in him. He's going to have uh, Jewish blood. Uh, he's going to have a kindred of, um, um, of Christianity. So the Roman Empire is going to rise again. Okay? The United States um, came out of the Roman Empire. Okay? Our democracy comes from Rome. Okay, that all people are created equal and have inalienable rights. And then we're going to see this, the rise of the Antichrist, um, the Middle East dictator out of Daniel chapter number 7, Revelation 13, 1 and 3. He's going, he's here. It is a male. But when I say he's going to rise, that means he's going to come to leadership. He exists right now. And even pulling strings. I believe he was responsible for the 10 or so 20 million Indians that have gone through this thing of putting the chip in their hand. I believe he's behind that and wanted to see that was a test run. And you all haven't even heard about it, most of you. How can over 20 million people receive a chip and the world not hear, hear it? The power of the Antichrist to deceive and to divulge. Come on, somebody. There is the Antichrist and then the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist is different. Well, it's the same, but it's different than the Antichrist. The Antichrist shall be the manifestation. He will be possessed by Lucifer. But the spirit of the Antichrist is just so many things that are going on today all over the world. Um, the seven-year peace treaty with Israel, the establishment of the world church. Russia springs a surprise attack on Israel. It's going to happen. I always keep my eye on Israel. I don't care what Trump is saying. I don't care if there's con con conclusion, collusion, bellusion. My eyes on Israel. Come on. It don't even, doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. I'm praying, but my eyes on Israel. And Putin got his eye on Israel. So how does he get to Israel? He's got to get to our president. He's got something on our president. Amen. To cause our president just to turn away from Israel. Amen. Russia don't want us. She wants Israel. Okay? It's 8.35. Boy, I had so much fun. And we have so much more to go. Will you give me five minutes? Will you really? I want you to see just this information on the television. I have so much information, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have spent just with this series probably about 25 hours in preparation. Even though we had some, we had some speakers to come. It's been about 25 hours of uh, preparation with the Book of Revelation. And so what all we're going to do is just go little by little, just little by little, give you some encouragement, give you some anecdotal notes, give you scripture so that um, you uh, understand. Now, can you turn that just a little bit so these young people over here 
But I tell you what. Let's just move this. Can everyone see that? Talk to me now. Y'all seem like you all been struck by lightning. Okay. Can everybody can see? Can you all see? Let's see if this works. Cut lights off, please. Until you control the health care second, because everybody needs health care, the next thing to go down the, the list is food. Amen. It's about the Antichrist getting ready to control, control things. First, control the health care second, control the food. Once you get the food, you now own the nation. You control the people. You can tell them what to eat, what not to eat, what to plant, what not to plant, where they can plant, where they not are not to plant. The name, the mark, and the number of Thank <laughs> you.